Socks. They shouldn't be attached to soccer cleats. What's going on guys? Josh from SoccerReviewsForYou.com bringing you the top five ugliest Nike soccer cleats of all time. Now, of course, when you're talking about the looks of anything, it's very much based around personal opinion. So of course, and I think this goes without saying that all of these picks are based on my own opinions on what I think looks good. And I guess more importantly for this video, what I think is pretty ugly. Now, keep in mind that I made this list based around design and not colorway. So we're gonna be focusing on the shape, the materials used, the way the shoe looks in general, whether it's the graphics, the positioning of the logo, certain elements that make the shoe look particularly ugly. That is the focus of this top five list. Perhaps in the future, I can make a top five or top 10 ugliest colorways from Nike, if that's something you guys would like to see let me know down below in the comments. But again, the focus of this video and the picks that I made are based around the specific designs of each individual shoe. I will say that upon coming up with this idea in the first place, I thought it would be a lot easier to come up with five picks for really ugly Nike boots, but with as many models as they've come out with, again, excluding specific colorways, I think Nike for the most part has done a pretty good job of making really good looking shoes. Again, based on my own personal opinion. However, I definitely did come up with five that I thought were particularly ugly. If you guys do end up enjoying this video, don't forget to support it with a like. And if you're new here watching for the first time, be sure to hit that subscribe button for daily videos on all the latest and greatest soccer gear. And don't forget to hit that little bell notification so you get notified every time a new video is uploaded. As always, feel free to leave your own picks for the ugliest Nike boots of all time down below in the comments. And keep in mind guys, this is just for fun. Obviously it's just my opinion. My opinion is not fact when we're talking about what's good looking and what is ugly in the soccer cleat world. So if I do name a shoe that you have or have had in the past that you thought was a good looking boot, it's not that serious. It's not that big of a deal. Don't get triggered. Let's do it. At the five spot, we actually have Nike's latest and greatest boot, the Mercurial Superfly 6 Elite. And I picked the Superfly rather than the Vapor, just because I think the mid-cut variation of the shoe is just that much more unattractive, because especially in this launch orange colorway, they look like big orange socks. And I'm focusing more specifically on the regular graphics for the regular colorways of these new Mercurials, where you have this small Nike swoosh at the toe and the big M logo at the heel. Two things that a lot of people really do not like, along with the split sole design, which personally, I like the look of the split sole. It's something that we originally saw from the Mercurial series with the Vapor 3, 4, and 5. They've brought it back for now the 12th generation Vapor and the 6th generation Superfly, but this swoosh at the toe is easily the one aspect that I think most people can agree on is not the most attractive thing in the world. It's across the top of the toes rather than being where it should have been, which was either right here in the midfoot, a normal Nike swoosh position, or as we've had it with the Superfly 4 and Superfly 5, where it's a larger Nike swoosh that kind of wraps around the outside edge, kind of like what we saw on the CR7 Chapter 6 colorway of the Superfly 6. The M logo on the heel, it reminds me a lot of the BMW M series logo. And I know M's look like M's and this isn't necessarily a brand new logo for the Mercurial line, but to have it this big on the heel as kind of a big contrasting color that really sticks out on the boot, I don't necessarily think it's the best looking thing in the world. The lower cut collar looks better on feet admittedly than it does while I'm holding it here in my hands. But as a whole, there really should have been a better Nike swoosh here on the outside or at least in this area of the shoe rather than the small one at the toe. The big swoosh we have on the medial side looks great. Unfortunately, it's on the inside and nobody really gets to see it. So you're left with a shoe that, as far as Mercurials go, is probably one of the more unattractive Mercurials that Nike has ever put out. The four spot on this list goes to the Nike T90 Laser 3, which admittedly, growing up, I had these in several different colorways. As a kid, I really liked this particular shoe, although I never thought it was the most attractive one in Nike's lineup. The reason why it makes this list of ugliest Nike cleats of all time is because it is a very weird looking shoe. Although it's one of those designs that I think anybody can look at and kind of understand what Nike was going for. However, that doesn't change the fact that it's just really weird looking. You have this big rubberized kind of section here across the striking area of your foot. You're gonna notice that it has these little fins that kind of hang off that are extremely effective, but look really, really strange. The shoe as a whole is extremely bulky on feet. You have these five pads that kind of run across the top of the foot. The off-center lacing system is cut in kind of a strange way. The bottom has this very robotic, bulky look to it. The stitching pattern in the leather or the synthetic variation, depending on which one you go for, is kind of unusual. And it almost makes them look a little bit like 
ninja shoes or something weird on your feet. And especially in that launch colorway, I know colorways is not part of this video, but when they first launched these in the green, black and with red accents, it really reminded me of like Ninja Turtles and I'm not even a Ninja Turtles fan. I couldn't tell you anything about them other than the fact that the launch colorway of the T90 Laser 3 looked like something a Ninja Turtle would wear. And that's something that I've never been able to get out of my head. So for that reason, this is the number four spot on the ugliest Nike boots of all time list. At the three spot on this list, we actually have a limited edition release from Nike, the Nike GS2. That is not just a colorway variation of the original Nike GS. This is actually different, not only because of the colorway, but also because it incorporated Nike's ACC all conditions control technology, the first boot ever to feature ACC. We did not get that on the original Nike GS, which is partially why that shoe looked so much cleaner from a design standpoint. For the GS2, being that all condition control was launching here, they decided to plaster the ACC logo in giant letters across the side of what would otherwise be a very, very clean design. But that wasn't enough. They also filled in the white lettering with Safari print for some reason. And then if you missed that, it said ACC right there. They also wrote it out on the heel, all conditions control. And you can see on the medial side, they could have just gone with a regular white Nike swoosh and smaller ACC branding. It would have looked absolutely fantastic. From this angle, the shoe looks great. But from this angle, I've never really been able to get over the giant ACC logo. I like Safari print. I don't think the ACC logo is ugly, but when you put it this big on the side of the shoe, it just looks really dumb in my opinion. I'm not a huge fan of the way this looks, especially when you compare it to that original Nike GS design. They just had the small Nike swoosh here kind of on the outside of the toe, really, really clean, nothing happening other than just solid black through the midfoot area on both sides. Really cool, very futuristic shoe, although absolutely horrible to wear. The Nike GS1 and GS2, not a fun experience, very uncomfortable, extremely stiff. But from a visual standpoint, while this has a lot of potential to look very, very good, and some people might even think this is a very good looking shoe, to me that ACC logo on the side just doesn't look all that great. At the two spot, we have a boot that was so ugly that Nike had to redesign it halfway through its life cycle in hopes of boosting sales of this particular model. And that model is the original upper variation of the Nike Magista Opus 2, AKA the boot with pimples. I think it's pretty clear to see why this is not a very attractive design. We talked about the T90 Laser 3 kind of having those little bits that hang off the striking element. This has that happening all over, but in the form of basically bubbles that look like pimples that won't actually pop, but certainly do not look all that great. And when they released it in this launch colorway, especially where the dots themselves end up being kind of like an orangish pinkish red that actually looks like a pimple color. Again, it wasn't a very well received design for fairly obvious reasons. The positioning of the Nike swooshes, honestly, I don't think it's that bad. The Magista branding, not that bad. The design as a whole, not that bad. But when you add pimples to the upper, people simply do not want to buy it. Admittedly, once they redesigned it and essentially implemented the same type of texturing to the Kangalite upper that we got on the Flying It Magista Obra 2, the shoe looked a whole lot better, certainly cleaner in general. But the pimple boot will definitely go down in history as one of the ugliest boots the Nike has ever released. Which brings us to the number one spot on this list. We started the list with Mercurials, we're ending it with Mercurials as well. And it might be hard to believe, but the ugliest Nike boot of all time, at least in my opinion, is the Nike Match Mercurial. Now this is a boot that I think most people would agree is certainly not the most attractive. The Match Mercurial was the second ever Nike Mercurial model. The original is very fondly viewed by longtime Mercurial fans and has been remade by Nike in all kinds of different variations in the form of the modern Mercurials, that chrome, blue, and yellow design everybody absolutely loves. This, however, does not have the same iconic status from a design standpoint. It's got these kind of grip texturing streaks that are not super attractive. It's got a very small Nike swoosh awkwardly positioned at the heel on either side not very attractive. It never came in any kind of really cool colorways, this being definitely one of the more bland ones. This stripe through the middle, I don't think looks very good. The stripe across the back, definitely not that attractive. And the shoe as a whole is just extremely clunky and bulky looking, which is not what you think of when you think Nike Mercurial. Now these came out in the year 2000, so it was 18 years ago that these were a thing. But if you look at the Nike Mercurial Vapor 1 that came after these in 2002, it's a huge difference from a design standpoint and that shoe really sculpted what the Mercurial line would eventually turn into 
from that point forward. But in terms of the ugliest Mercurials and the ugliest Nike boots ever, to me, it has to be the Match Mercurial. I did want to give an honorable mention to the Nike Hypervenom Phantom 2, which in my opinion, I don't really think it's all that ugly, but I know a lot of people really didn't like this kind of zigzag pattern along the bottom edge of the shoe that you had on both sides with this kind of crackle pattern. Personally, I think this is kind of a cool looking shoe. I certainly don't think it's the best performing boot in its original form factor, not all that comfortable in my opinion, but from a visual standpoint, a lot of people really did not like how these look, especially in comparison to the model they replaced, the Hypervenom Phantom 1. And that concludes what I believe to be the top five ugliest Nike boots of all time. If you guys did enjoy the video, don't forget to support it with a like. And again, if you have any picks of your own for the ugliest Nike boots ever, let me know what they are down below in the comments because I'm really curious to hear what a lot of people would pick. As always, if you have any questions, feel free to leave those down below in the comments as well and I'll definitely do my best to get an answer out to you. And if you have any suggestions for other top five videos you'd like to see on the channel, let me know down below in the comments. I always take a look at everything you guys have to say. Subscribe if you haven't already for daily videos on all the latest and greatest soccer gear. You can find all my social media information linked down below in the description as well. And other than that guys, hope you enjoyed the video. As always, thanks for watching.